reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I commanded him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him? His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gap between God and us human beings is great. God is infinite, perfect, and holy. We are finite, imperfect, and sinful. One of the concerns of the people in the Old Testament was how to interact with this almighty God. They had a tradition which said that anyone who saw God face to face would die. This was not necessarily because God was angry with them, but because God was too holy to behold directly by human eyes. Even though there are passages in the Old Testament of God attempting to draw near to them, their instinct was to push God away. The great God couldn't possibly stoop to their level, they thought. God was God, and they were mere mortals. In today's first reading from Deuteronomy, we hear about the people pushing God away. Again, this was not because they didn't love God, but because God was too holy for them to behold directly. In response, the assembly said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. God agreed with their request and stepped back. The reading says that they asked God to send them a prophet to speak to them instead. As a fellow human being, a prophet would speak on behalf of God, but would also be less threatening. God complied. Father Karl Rahner, in his spiritual reflections, writes along similar lines to God. He says, I must confess that the longer I think about you, the more anxious I become. Your awful being threatens my security, makes me lose all sense of direction. To me and my smallness, that very thought brings terror. It makes me feel that all my joints are being sundered. I am left in agonizing uncertainty. Whenever I think of your infinity, I am racked with anxiety, wondering how you are disposed towards me. Just like the people in the Old Testament, he continues, No, Lord, you must speak to me in a word that does not mean everything at once, a word that does not embrace the whole of reality in one unfathomable unity. You must say a word to me that means just one thing, one thing which is not everything. You must make your infinite word finite if I am to be spared this feeling of terror at your infinity. You must adapt your word to my smallness. I like this reflection from Father Honor because it reminds us that just because we live in New Testament times doesn't mean that we should lose the great reverence that the Old Testament people had for the infinite God. God the Father is still a great mystery to us. Just like the people in the Old Testament, we also need someone to mediate the infinite God to us finite human beings. The only difference is that instead of a prophet, we have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
Our point for liturgy this weekend is that even Christians should retain the great mystery of the infinite God and not pretend to have God figured out. A question to reflect upon today. In my interactions with others, especially those I disagree with, do I pretend that I have God all figured out and they are the ones who are wrong? Jesus Christ did not come to take away the mystery of God so that we can be right and everybody else be wrong. He came to let us know that we can let the infinite God draw near without being afraid of dying. The response to that is not arrogance, but humility.